Hello, welcome to Film Forums. My name is Millie Haywood and I'm a screenwriter and actress. And today I have a very special guest with me. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, Tarek uh, Saleh. I'm a film director from Sweden, uh, or I'm half Egyptian, half Swedish, uh, but I work all over the place. I work, you know, I shoot all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And um, can you tell us a bit about your uh, background in filmmaking? How did you get started in the film industry? Yeah, so, I mean, I was basically born in a film studio. My father is a stop motion animator and he was developing uh, advanced sort of special effects film equipment. And he yeah. had a studio. So I, I sort of grew up with it. But then I took a big detour where I... I was a graffiti writer for a long time, for 15 years. That was sort of my passion growing up, uh, spray painting trains. And then uh, wow. I, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, and then I went into art directing and things like that. And through that, I started playing around with short animated films and went into becoming a documentary filmmaker. I, I directed two feature documentaries and then I did Metropia, which was sort of my feature debut film, which is an animated film for grown-ups. That's fantastic. Um, so now I'm going to talk about your film, The Contractor, which is um, going to be released. And um, I've actually, I've watched the film and I just want to say, oh. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was oh. really emotionally gripping and right. um, without giving too much away. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. So, Thank you um, so much. Thanks. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud of it. I, I really like it. And I, I think that for me, yeah, I've heard all these horror stories of European directors going to work in Hollywood and what that would mean and that you would go, that you were not going to be able to do your film. But I must say that a lot of it, I, I didn't, I felt that I got to do my film, you know, in many ways, which is kind of uplifting and nice. Um, so that, that um, yeah, I mean, I've had heard all kinds of horror stories from my friends that, that went and did their first Hollywood film, you know, that they got, you know, the film was taken away from them and blah, 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 you know, all these things. Yeah, and all the challenges that come with it. And so can you give us an insight into what The Contractor is about? Yeah, so the contractor is about a special forces operator who's basically been given his whole life to the army and uh, he's being uh, uh, basically booted from his uh, company. And uh, not only that, he loses his pension and health care. So he comes home to his wife and, and son and uh, the bills are piling up and he needs a job, basically. Um, and all he really knows how to do is being a soldier. And so there is a lot of opportunities out there with these private contracting firms that where you can get paid a lot of money. The only problem is that it's not the same thing as being in the army, you know, uh, because yeah, the cause is not always sort of transparent why you're doing what you're doing. And so uh, but the film, the film is is about uh, his friendship with with I mean his sort of best friend that he sort of that recruits him to this firm and uh, what happens to them when they go on this mission that sort of goes wrong. The mission goes wrong, you could say, uh, without giving too much away because of course there's a lot of things that happens after and it becomes a matter of life and death and, you know, how to get home to America again. This mission that, that brings him to Berlin, uh, which is, you know, has one, it's one of America's closest allies, you know, Germany. So it's complicated to go in as a private contractor into Berlin to do a mission. It's complicated. With action films, sometimes you, the, it, we struggle sometimes to empathize with the characters because it's sort of more about the action and the guns and the crime and stuff. Whereas I thought your film from the start, I really sort of felt something for your characters and they really like hooked me in. So no, it was a really, had a really good style, the film. 
and you'll you'll appreciate that as a script writer. I I think that it was all in the screenplay and uh, you know Thunder Road. The producers that are very good producers, they've done amazing films. Uh, they sent me a, a few different scripts, and this one. Uh, when I read it, I knew right away that there was something special because it it was truly character driven. You know, it wasn't plot driven. First of all, I believed in the character. I, I knew that this guy exists, uh, and also that he that his actions will determine what the film, how the film will develop. So. Uh, and I didn't know that it was Chris Pine that was attached to it when I read the script. I saw a real man in front of me. And then when I, when the producer said, yeah, you, you, how, how, what do you think about Chris Pine? He's attached to it. I said, I love Chris Pine. I think he's an amazing actor. Uh, but I don't see him clearly in this part, to be honest. I don't know. I've seen he's so ele elegant. He's so good looking. You know, that's... And that's, of course, the the first thing you think about with Chris Pine is how good looking he is, right? Uh, so then I went and met with him. And yeah, it's true. He is, he looks amazing. I mean, that's uh, the first thing you think about. But as we got to know each other, because we, we, we actually met a few times. Uh, I went first to meet him in New York and then in, in LA. And I, and when I went to his house, I started to see sort of his, uh, the human. And the human has a lot of vulnerability and a lot of, um, he's a very, he's very in touch with his emotions, which I knew that, okay, this, he will have, he, he can go there. He can really sort of, because I think that part of what works for me with this story is that the stakes are real, that he is afraid. He actually thinks he's going to die there. I think at one point he's like, this is not going well. <laughs> this is like, you know, and he's not the superhero. I mean, yes, he's extremely well trained. He is trained to survive almost anything, but his, his, as as you know, his it's not just physically attacked. I mean, he's morally. I mean, his 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 core morals are attacked, and I think that's that's very difficult for a soldier. If you start to feel that you're fighting the wrong fight, that's that's very difficult. It's difficult to win. I felt uh, very lucky that the material and the actors were there for this, and uh, of course. I constantly ask myself, will they allow? I mean, will the studio actually say, okay, cool, great. Let's make a film where, where the hero is not always heroic, you know? Where he's sometimes, you know, waking up naked in a bathtub and sort of is afraid, you know? And that to me is sort of the core of the film. I think they choose me for a reason. I, I think they had seen my earlier work and knew that, I mean, you don't, I'm not uh, Michael Bay, you know, <laughs> that's not me. I, I mean, and not, nothing against Michael Bay, but I'm just not that guy, you know. I was going to say, one of my next questions was is that um, I know you've directed a range of projects, so from documentaries, films, TV. And I was going to say, I was going to mention one of my favourite shows. I know you've directed an episode of Westworld. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, oh, I'm in love with that show. Could you tell us a bit about um, that, what it's like directing a, a TV show even? Westworld is not a TV show. It's like directing a movie uh, because, you know, you come in uh, and Westworld is shot on 35. Almost all the effects are, are uh, you know, practical. You're shooting for one episode takes 25 days to shoot, you know, so it's a, it's a huge undertaking. And then, you know, you go all over the place. It's like, and the actors are amazing, of course. And uh, no, it was like, I mean, to me, it was crazy because when I came in, I came in on season, uh, uh, season two and they're very secretive about the script. So it was three weeks before I was starting prep, I got to start to read the second season. And when I came to the episode before my episode, it just opens in Japanese. 
And I was like, holy, you know. Uh, and then when I realized that in my episode, I was going to shoot a sci-fi, a Western, and a samurai movie, I just went to Jonah Nolan and said, you know, what, what are you? Are you Santa Claus? Are you sort of the filmmaker Santa Claus giving me this sort of playground to play around with all these genres? I know and what you be... mean. There's, yeah, there's nothing better than like a genre mashup. It's crazy, isn't it? Oh, so lovely. Like waking up, today I'm going to be Kurosawa. Tomorrow I'm going to be, you know, uh, you know, John Ford. And, uh, and then I'm going to be Kubrick's on the like Tuesday, you know, it was crazy. And, and then I love, it was lovely working with all the actors were lovely to work with, but especially Ed Harris was, it was so much fun. He's so incredible. And I connected with him emotionally also. I think I, you know, he's just, uh, an incredible force and, uh, and Jeffrey Wrights was, I mean, it's, it's, they are, I mean, it's like you're working with such high caliber and it's the same in, in the contractor, you know, you work with people like Chris and Ben, and then you have Gillian Jacobs and you have Kiefer Sutherland, you have Eddie Morrison. Eddie Morrison is probably one of the three best actors in the world. You know, he's, you know, and I worked with him on Ray Donovan. So I was, I already knew him and loved him. So I actually sort of begged the producers. I was like, can we hire Eddie Morrison? Because he's sort of the best act. I mean, he is so good. And, and Chris was like, it was, he also loved working with Eddie. Eddie is just, I mean, he's so good. He's so good. I don't know if people understand how good he is. And, and Kiefer, Kiefer too. I mean, Kiefer, because I'm born in the 70s, I remember him from Lost Boys and, you know, A Few Good Men. You know, people, people think of him as the guy in 24, but I know he's a film actor. He's like, you know, he comes in and he delivers and you're like, I mean, when he holds his pitch there at the farm and, you know, I'm in. I want to join his fucking tribe, you know, and you, there is zero, you know, you just, there is no resistance. You're like, holy shit. Okay, we're, let's go. You know, he's so good. I, I love him. And that's what you are as a director. That's what you have. You know, it's your, I mean, you're basically nothing. Uh, you have a great DOP, you have a great editor, you have great actors. That's, and uh, you just stay out of their way, you know. <laughs> no, I get you. It's about you have to have this good network of people as crew that you can trust and rely on. So no, that's brilliant. And another question I had was actually um, sort of more the writer side as well, because I understand you're also a writer and you've written for various projects. Um, uh, a budding sort of a writer asking you, what would be your advice when it comes to sort of the writing process, say treatments or even getting your script out there once you've written it? Yes. I love writing. It is sort of what I am at the core. And I, I like it more than directing. I think it's, think of writing as, you know, filmmaking is difficult. Filmmaking is very expensive. It's politics. Writing is sort of the artistic side of it. You are, you can do anything. You can afford to do anything. Uh, and the advice I would give, first of all, I, I think that you have to have discipline. So you have to know, like, I put, when I write, I sort of make, um, I put in my calendar. So, so I say, okay, I'm going to write for 10 days. Now, the typical, the typical cycle I would do is I'll write five days. Uh, and, and I basically put on my writer's hat, you know, so I'm a writer now and I am, I don't care. I'm not criticized. I don't care if it's good or bad. I'm not reviewing my work. I just write. Da, 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 da. And so I write for five days. Then I take the weekend off. And then I take five days and I become a critic. I, I take off the writer's hat and I become sort of a studio or a producer or a actor or whatever. I put on that hat and I read what I did before the weekend. And a lot of times that's kind of horrible because you're like, oh, this is shit. This is shit. This is shit. This is not good. You know, 
but somewhere in there, and it's a lot of times when you felt that what you were writing was good, it's almost never good. But in between, there are amazing things. And if you can sort of say, oh, here we have something. Okay. And then you give yourself notes. And then I have a few trustees that I let read, and they have to be very honest and very hard, but they should have no stakes in my game. And I share the script very late with outsiders, and especially people that have power. I, wanted to, I want to know that the script is good. And here is sort of, I don't know, good and bad news. A lot of times, like, I hope my script is good, then it means it's not you know when it's good it's like it's when it reads so well that you know you, people people just sort of can't stop reading it that's how good it should be before you share it with producers and and studio and so forth to get a script done is very difficult there are so many great scripts that never gets done they get optioned, but they don't get made. The best way to get it made is to make it yourself. I mean, I would say that's the, I mean, that's, I, I came from it a little bit differently. I had my first scripts done by other directors and I was so disappointed with the result. So I decided to start to direct myself. And uh, then I was first, at first, disappointed with my own work as a director. So I realized like, okay, it is difficult. But then I said, okay, how, so, so that is also funny. Like when I, for example, shoot films that I've written, I, a lot of times sort of, <laughs> I change hats. I'm like, I'm going to ask the writer what, what he was thinking, <laughs> you know, when like, and then, you know, I ask myself, but I, you know, and, um, uh, Actors are great people to have to, re to read because they know, like you know, so you're, I mean, you know, like, okay, there is no motivation here. There is no scene. Where is the you scene? There is love, no, yeah. yeah, yeah, because they know, like, I have to have, what do I want? What do I want here? You know, it's, as a writer, a lot of times you write things that you, do, you make the character do things so that the story move forward. But maybe the character is like, no, fuck that. I'm not doing this, you know? What was it like working with Chris Pine? I know you've mentioned briefly, but um, and he said he came on board, sort of he was attached to the script first. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. Uh, it's very different. Like actors are humans, obviously. So... You have to understand where they're coming from, what their fears are, what they, what, 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 you have to get to know them. That's the short answer. And uh, of course, if you put on the layer of that, they are also stars. Uh, and I've had uh, sort of, I've been lucky in that, that I am close friends with a few stars that wasn't, star I mean, that became stars. Like one of my best friends is Alexander Skarsgård. And, so I knew sort of, I knew the fears. I knew the sort of the, there is something that comes with that. There is a responsibility that comes with that. They know like when Chris Pine makes this film, he's not just an actor. He is also a producer. He's also, he financed the film. So in a way, he's a commodity in the market. Well, my job is to make him forget that and to be the character, right? And my job is to constantly remind him of uh, the little things. So Chris is extremely easy to direct. He's, very, he's a very good actor. And uh, uh, so the movie star in him uh, is something that you have to try to sort of deal with i mean it's very easy to fall in love with him and to sort of you know be but my job is also not to i, I mean to to sort of be critical to to be the critical eye there and to say oh well, i there i felt that i felt that you were being uh just a movie star what 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 do you think he what isn't he afraid at this point and and Chris is very good at 
taking adjustments like it's like yeah uh, and so it was it was lovely it was a lovely experience i mean i feel like i have had the luck to work with like for example on uh, on ray donovan when you have a whole bunch of amazing actors like you know you have Liev schreiber and you have uh, uh, Boyd, young Boyd, you know, people like that, they are legends, you know, uh, but they're all there for, they love their job. So once it's time to play, if you set sort of, if you remind people of how fun it is, what we do, because it is ultimately really, we're still playing, we're still on the playground. We're, we, you know, we're, we're playing pretend, you know, we, you know, and I think for me, sometimes I pinch myself and I say, wow, I get to play pretend with the best actors in the world. And I, I get to be sort of the ringleader of the game and say, okay, you're, you're a cowboy, you're a ninja, you're this, you're that. And then you really, you know, you, you hate him and you love him and you're trying to steal his money, you know? So it is like when you were kids and I mean, you know, to confess when I was a kid, when I was in kindergarten, it was a real problem because I was doing that when I was in kindergarten. The other parents said, you know, Tariq is taking the games a little bit too far. You know, our kids come home and believe that they are someone <laughs> because Tariq have convinced them, you know, when I was six years old, I, I, I like to sort of build worlds with kids, you know. But now, now I get paid to do it, and that's good. And you know, people have contracts, and are, you know, all participating by free will. So, no, that's fantastic. And um, thank you so much for sharing your advice. And um, one of my my final question actually would be, as a general, if you had a one piece of like a nugget of advice that you would give to filmmakers, what would that be? The thing that a lot of young filmmakers ask me, and I mean, I. I'm trying to act like I'm young, but I'm 50 years old. So it's a little bit, you know, I'm sort of in between. But like um, when young filmmakers ask me, like, how do I, how do I make it into film? How, how do I do to get my film made? I always say, do you have to? And then, they, no, I don't have to, but I would like, to. I'm like, don't do it if you don't have to. Don't do it if you don't have to. You have to ask yourself, do you have to tell this story? Why do you have to tell this story? Because it takes a long time, especially if you're talking, if you're not doing a short, that's fine. But like if you're making a feature film, it takes years. And you have to live with that. And you're going to wake up sometimes and ask yourself, why am I telling this story? And if you don't have an answer. So for me, for example, with the contractor, I knew that the theme was fatherhood. And that's an important theme that I care about. I knew that this film was about fatherhood, ultimately. Yeah, it's an action thriller. I love genre film, but, but, but it's also about fatherhood. And that's important to me. And that I could wake up in the middle of the night, someone asked me, what is this film about? It's about fatherhood, you know? No, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for all of your advice. You've been absolutely amazing. And thank you for coming on Film Forums. Thanks, Millie. <laughs>